Hey everybody, Ted Davis here, um, you know, with uh, another video for you, um, and I'd like to share something with, uh, to all of my, uh, viewers and subscribers, uh, I think I've touched on it before, but, um, I wanted to make a video where I go a little bit more in depth, in depth, <laughs> um, on this topic, but, uh, um, I have Asperger's Syndrome. Though it's technically not called Asperger's Syndrome anymore. It hasn't since, I believe, 2018. Um, it's called high-functioning autism, but uh, a lot of us remember, still call it uh, Asperger's Syndrome. Uh, I was diagnosed with uh, this form of autism in 2009, or was it 2010? No, I think it was 2009. Yeah, 2009. So I've officially lived with it for, uh, 11 years, um, and, uh, growing up, uh, let me tell you, I was actually, um, in preschool starting, you know, when maybe I was about three or four, um, you could tell that, uh, there was something, excuse me, uh, something, I don't, don't want to say wrong, but like something a lot different about me that uh, made me stick out from a lot of the other kids at the time, you know, the other three or four year olds, all five of them that I was in preschool with. Um, I was very, uh, I tended to stutter a lot um, when I was young. I tended to just blurt things out without really thinking about it. I tended to be very socially awkward in front of uh, my peers. I still am to this day. It just, it happens a lot less now. Um, and really, uh, I found myself getting into trouble a lot from maybe preschool to about uh, fourth grade. Um, and that ranged from saying things that I thought were funny that other people found very hurtful, you know, really just kind of petty things, to saying something that really creeps somebody out, to maybe, uh, you know, you know, just a whole bunch of things, like, you know, inappropriate, I don't, I don't want to say that, but like, um, sort of like physical contact with somebody that they thought uncomfortable they th that they thought was uncomfortable and that I thought was fine and just a whole bunch of things that today you look back on and you think man you really got in trouble for that well yeah I did and uh, that ended up I that landed me in the principal's office quite a bit um, in elementary school um, and uh, but then I think my teachers at that time really saw in me some, uh, some kind of amp fiery ambition that I was very extroverted, that I really enjoyed expressing myself, um, in front of my peers. And, uh, I think it took a lot of my, a lot of the people that, the people that I knew in elementary school, who, a lot of whom I actually went to high school with, um, to really sort of understand that, um, cause you know, eight year olds, you know, you don't, you don't even know what the spectrum is. You don't even know what a disability is when you're eight years old. So it's, uh, we have the psyche when we're young to, that just tells us whenever somebody's acting, acting different than, differently than what our parents taught us, uh, we choose to make fun of that person and, and shame them. And another thing was that a lot of kids actually did make fun of me in elementary school. I was bullied quite a bit and I didn't realize it. Um, I thought, I thought a lot of people were my friends. I, uh, um, just tended to go along with a lot of the jokes and I didn't really get hurt very much by a lot of the things that people said because I just thought everything was funny and that, um, I left. I tended to come to school in a, in a good mood all the time. And, you know, for better or for worse, that uh, seemed to rub um, rub people the a certain way uh, when I came into the classroom. So, you know, fast forward to about middle school. Um, and middle school was a, was a, um, a, overall a pretty good time for me. Uh, I 
knew at that point that I had um, that I had Asperger's, and I didn't really tell a lot of people. I didn't. I didn't hang out with a lot of people in middle school, but I liked, I still like to say that I had a, that I had a lot of friends and, um, that I was, and not that I was popular, but I was like well known in, in my grade and I got to be well known pretty fast. And I know I matured. I didn't get in trouble at all in middle school. Um, that I had, did have some issues with some kids, but you know, I, I tended to, um, overlook things and not want to get in get anybody to get it get anybody in trouble or cause any trouble with other people I tended to be very friendly towards other people um you know there there were some uh some situations where I ran into where I maybe said something that some somebody found offensive or that hurt somebody but instead of going to an adult about it like we did in elementary school we just talk about it and just solve it you know, like the mature 11, 12, 13 year olds that we were. Um, and, you know, cause I, and I, before that I had started really getting serious about, uh, music and playing drums and that, um, sort of, uh, um, getting better at that sort of helped me express myself. And I wasn't afraid to, and a lot of people I think caught on to started thinking, Oh, wow, he's a pretty good drummer. You know, I, I like I like how this guy isn't afraid to express himself, and um, that really evolved into high school. And high school was overall was a great time for me. Um, I mean, I did make a lot of friends, um, especially being involved in high school band. I mean, I can't even uh, tell you how um, influential high school band was, um, and me being more serious about drumming and and getting a lot better at that. Um, pep band. But in particular, was a was a major influence on me. Um, that was really the chant, the um, the part of band where I could really express myself on the drum set and really inspire the musicians around me. Um, and that was a very exhilarating feeling because I felt like that my peers were getting inspired by me, and that's what I really wanted to do in high school. Um, and I tried to be a role model to people in high school. Um, I became more open about Asperger's syndrome going into high school and I maybe by like sophomore year I wasn't afraid to tell anybody that I had a disability and people began to be more understanding of me and didn't think I was as weird and um, really uh, just started treating me like I was more a normal person than you know that weird kid that they knew in, a, in elementary school because like i said most of my my high school peers went uh to elementary school with me and uh you know i really enjoyed high school c quite a bit and um uh and then when i went into college that that um life even got better for me and now to this day uh i made a lot more friends in college i you know obviously played in a lot and with Played in a lot of bands in, in college and, you know, taking those um, things that I learned from a uh, high school band and sort of applying them in, um, in, you know, like a contemporary setting. And that really, that really helped me. I, I forged a lot of, uh, um, especially when I went to MTSU and, and uh, sort of meeting all of the uh, recording industry majors there, you know, audio production, commercial songwriting, music business. Um, you begin to realize what um, I always like to think of the the recording industry program at MTSU is just a, a huge band of misfits. You know, we were the misfits in high school. We were the ones that stuck out like a sore thumb, and uh, we were the ones um, sort of having being afraid to express ourselves in front of everybody, thinking that we were going to get made fun of and everything like that, and. It was really cool getting to uh, meet a lot of people that were uh, like a lot of uh, like-minded people and getting to work with them at MTSU, and I'll, I'll go into detail with that in another video. So uh, that's just sort of like a quick a quick uh, summation of, um, of of my life with Asperger's, and um, to anybody watching right now who maybe is on the spectrum or maybe does have Asperger's syndromes themselves or knows somebody with it. Um, I will tell you right now, uh, after your diagnosis it, and as you begin to, it, you know, maybe your first year, two or three after you're diagnosed with it, um, 
it's going to take a lot of use to, uh, it's going to take a lot of getting used to, of getting, you know, living with it. First accepting that you have it. Um, because a lot of people, and when I first got diagnosed, I thought there was something wrong with me. You know, I still think there's something wrong with me, but I don't think it has anything to do with Asperger's syndrome. Maybe it might, I don't know. But I definitely thought that there was something wrong, that I was, you know, cursed or something like that when I first had it. And that, you know, I was never going to be like anybody else. And, you know, I was sort of an abomination. I began to feel bad. And that wasn't... And it took a long time for, it took me about a year maybe to finally accept that I had Asperger's syndrome. And, uh, that's something that, that a lot of people that, you know, when you first get diagnosed, no matter what age, um, I was diagnosed with when I was about 11, uh, that you should, uh, get, that you should get used to. I'm not saying that it's going to happen overnight because it's not, it'll take a while, but, um, um, it, you know, just accept the fact that you have it. And secondly, I will say that, um, with that, it will be very difficult to make friends because of just the way that your brain is wired and how you perceive things. You know, we tend to go on 11 minute, you know, 11 hour monologues about stuff that we think is interesting that other people don't. And, you know, people are just faking it. <laughs> <laughs> are faking being interested in, you know, after we lost their attention three minutes into the monologue, and we don't tend to pick up on sarcasm very well. We never know if we're annoying people by our actions. We tend to do things without thinking. We tend to have a lot of anxiety. You know, there, it's very hard for us to maintain relationships, um, romantic relationships, and, and and I'll go on record as saying I... I've never been in a romantic relationship before. I'm 22 and I've never been in a romantic relationship before. I've never had sex before. I, I'm not afraid to admit that. Yeah, I know. It's surprising. You know, people my age are, you know, getting, are, you know, are getting some all over the place. And here I am still, still haven't never had a girlfriend before. But, you know, in either case, um, just if you haven't gone to counseling and that's and that's something I should have brought up or should have should have that is something I should have brought up earlier I was lucky enough to get to have gone to counseling for starting maybe like six months after I was diagnosed and I've mean, been going to the same counselor roughly for almost 12 years now and um it has helped I can tell you that much it has helped and um I know people that who have it who have Asperger's that have not gone to counseling. And I can tell you it, it makes a real difference because they are, I don't think they're as aware of how they're being perceived as maybe someone like me who has gone to counseling. And I can tell you right now, and I can't emphasize enough, go to counseling. You're going to learn so much more about your disability. It's something that scientists have, have been studying since the late nineties, since it became um, a form of autism, and pe there are people out there that know so much about this disability than me. This is just coming from a guy who's um, had it for, like I said, 11, 12 years, and um, who wants to share his experiences and hopes that somebody is going to find this video use useful. So, um, and believe me, when you get used to it, uh, you will... Uh, you will learn to accept yourself like I have. And um, believe me, I think that having Asperger's syndrome is probably, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. The, the curse is, like I said, you know, like I said earlier with how our brain is wired and how we perceive things. But the blessing is, is that, you know, when you're focused on something, you are focused. Like, you channel all the distractions, excuse me, that would otherwise prevent you from achieving your goal, and you just do it to the best of your ability, however long it takes you. you you're going to get that done, and you're focused on it. And that's a really, then that's a real strength. And, you know, us Aspies tend to have a lot of, um, tend to have a memory, 
that tend to have the memory of an elephant. And I find that to be a blessing. Um, not having to write as much stuff down is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty great. And having a good memory. Not that I'm t tooting my own horn. I hope I don't come off like that. But, you know, scientifically speaking, that's that tends to be the case for a lot of Aspies. So, um, if you're watching this uh, and you have Asperger's Syndrome, it's going to be okay. You're a great person. Love yourself. And other people. And if other people think of you highly, they will accept you. And shame on them if they don't. But you are a great person. You're going to do great things in this world. And, um, you know, it's great to be a misfit, I guess. So, with that being said, I uh, hope that this has helped anybody who has Asperger's Syndrome or you know, wants to know about it. I'm not, this wasn't intended to be like a, you know, an hour long monologue on the specifics of things. This is just, you know, a, a quick summation of, of my life with Asperger's syndrome and how I dealt with it and how I live with it to this day. And, uh, I hope this has helped a lot. So with that being said, uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.